Good morning, friends, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, what a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning it is for me. I'm looking out over the hills. Um, and welcome to Art of Love Radio Show. I'm your host, Ashley Davine. And Kayla, are you in the line with us? Hi, guys. Awesome. We've got Kayla Tabish. Um, so we've got a really, and I'll tell you more about her in a second, but first I want to tell you what we're talking about today, relationships. <laughs> the always interesting, sometimes sticky topic, um, but everybody's dealing with it. So we really want to give it a go. We want to chat about it with you today. Uh, we thank you for being here. We've got special guest co-host, Kayla Tavish in the house. <laughs> she's an actor, producer, activist. And she's um, worked and she's appeared on shows such as Criminal Mind. Uh, she's co-starred in the movie The Girl Next Door alongside Emile Hirsch and Alicia Cuthbert. And she's also starred in the movie Lauren Cat. Welcome, Kayla. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. So we have got a really awesome show today. Um, we want to let you know before we get started, if you have questions uh, for us at any time during the show, what you can do is go ahead and get involved, log on to your Twitter account, and just shout us out. It's uh, at uh, twitter.com aside slash Ashley underscore Davine, and you can find that information as well on the widget for Blog Talk Radio. Um, or you could do at Kyla, at Kayla, that is like, at Kayla Tadish um, on Twitter. And we'll answer your questions if we get a chance, and if we don't answer them now, we'll answer them after. So, okay, how are you this morning, Kayla? Excellent. How about yourself? I'm feeling really good. So we're going to jump right on in. But before we do, I want us all to really ground into the heart. Um, the Art of Love radio show is going to be an awesome place to really connect in and have great conversations. But let's start with our own hearts. So before we start talking about relationships, <laughs> let's all close our eyes if we can. If we're driving, we don't have to. So let's just start by taking a couple of deep breaths together. And energetically, this is all just going to work us in, and then we can get going um, on our conversation, okay? So everybody now, just close your eyes if you can, and take a deep breath into the base of your being. And then the nose, and holding, 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 releasing anything that's tense or blocking. Releasing anything tense or blocking to you. And then breathe out, let go. Feel this warm golden light start to build around you as you connect into your heart. And we'll breathe together one more time. Into the nose. Releasing anything heavy. Really tapping into your heart and getting pretty involved in this, um, in this space of us. So let that air go. And yay, thank yourself for being here. And we're just going to jump on in. We're going to talk about self-love. Because, you know, Kayla and I have been chatting about it a little bit, and we really feel like self-love is where it all starts. It's the foundation. You know, it's the, it's the beginning and the end. We come, you know, here with our, with our soul, and we leave here with our soul. Um, we don't really take anybody else with us. So we're going to start by just having uh, Kayla tell us a little bit about her own, you know, sort of feelings or views on self-love. Well, I really like what Ashley has to say, that, that self-love is the core of it all. Um, but I think that when you understand the biology behind it, it really is empowering for the person. So what I'm talking about is when you initially meet somebody and you have that attraction, you have those butterflies in your stomach, you feel crazy about this person, you have to understand that that's dopamine and norepinephrine being released in your brain. And when you understand the biological side of things, you kind of have a little bit more control over it. I know that um, Dr. Helen Fisher, I love her, if you can check out some of her books, she's an anthropologist, um, she actually did a case study and she compared the effects of a couple of glasses of wine to somebody who was sober and in love and the brain activity was off the charts for the in love person versus the wine. So she went a little bit further and she conducted another study with uh, subjects on crack cocaine 
and compare the brain act to that of those that were in the beginning stages of affection and love, and it was similar. So you have to remember that when you're going into um, a relationship, or even when you have that first infatuation, but it, it's all biological, and so sometimes you have to really check yourself and and remember whether your motives are pure, and remember to love yourself because um, the dopamine and norepinephrine it's similar to a drug. That's why they say you know high on love. Yeah, absolutely. You know, check yourself before you wreck yourself, girl. Right? <laughs> um, but you know, you know, it's funny because actually the art of love webinar um, you know that I do talks about just that. We talk about the scientific effect of love on the body, and I love that you brought that up because it's so true and it's so right on. And, you know, the good news is, or the, the thing to get excited about is that we can give that feeling to ourselves. It's what we're realizing with the self-love. So, you know, when those, those uh, chemicals start kicking, we go, oh, my gosh, we're flying, you know, high. But the thing about looking for that from other sources, like you said, you know, you have to really, you know, ask yourself, like, you know, just like you said, is this real, you know, what's going on here? Is this a drug? Um, it's fleeting because other people can leave or they're not giving us what we need, you know, and that's why so many people are like, oh, my God. And, you know, when he's around, they're happy or she, and then when they're gone, they're upset. It's like, because that drug is leaving. So with self-love, and tell me your thoughts on this, girl. I'm feeling like I'm feeling we like can give that to ourselves, you know? Absolutely. And I really think that that's what makes an attractive person. Because I have so many girlfriends that come to me and they say to me, you know, when is the right time to call him? How do I play the game? And really, at the core of it, if you love yourself, if you have that foundation, you can make your, your decisions from that foundation. So basically I'm saying if you feel inclined to call that person, do so. I mean, I'm not saying call them 10,000 times because you're feeling high on that love. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, you, you have to be within reason, but I'm if great. you feel inconsistent, <laughs> definitely pick up the phone and call them. Respect yourself enough to know that if they reciprocate, then, you know, it's meant to go down that path. And if they don't, then so be it. And sometimes we have to tell ourselves we have to move forward and remembering the biology that what you're feeling is your body, your body connecting um, mm. to chemicals rather than you connecting to this person. So you're kind of projecting those emotions. So if you really truly get at the core of your being and love and respect yourself, no one can ever affect you or walk all over you. Yeah, that is gorgeous. And you know, we're going to jump, we're going to get more into communication a little bit down the road, but I love how you kind of set the platform for that there. Communication is really key. Um, but before we do that, you know, I wanted to bring something up that you had mentioned to me. You know, you know me, and, me and Taylor were just, you know, sisters as well, girlfriends. <laughs> so we're chatting the other night, you know, middle of the night. We're going, oh, gosh, you're up, you're up girl. Okay, so let's talk. And you know, she brought something really great up. She said, you know, anything you're looking for or you find really attractive in somebody else, it's something that you're really finding desirable in yourself. Let me see an example in my own life. You know, I'm performing and I'm taking things to the next level here, you know, as an artist in LA, really grateful, you know, really stoked out about all the energy I'm around, and I'm finding I'm really gravitating to, to men um, or, you know, just people, souls in general, um, who are performing or they're, they're, you know, really releasing themselves, they're really in full on in self expression. And it, it dawned on me, well, okay, that's my cue. Mm -hmm. How can I stimulate that more in my life? Can I start a radio show? <laughs> can I publish more articles? You know, can I, you know, increase the public? How can I reach out and touch the world more to stimulate myself to stop where it all starts and begins? So like you said, remembering just that anything you're finding in the other person, you can give to yourself. What, what do you have any, like, experience or stories with that um, that you want to share with us? Well, I really like that you brought that up because, um, actually, Ashley and I have never met in person, but we've been corresponding um, on the phone and, and via Facebook. And I, I really live by this principle that life is reflective. And um, I didn't make this up. I read it somewhere. But uh, a great analogy is that when you're looking for something, be it positive or negative, the laws of attraction bring that to you. And I think the best way to explain it is this analogy. Say that you, you go out and buy a, a Volkswagen bus. And, you know, you, you've been on the road for 10 years. You've been a driver. And you've never really noticed them. You go out and you buy them, and I'm sure everyone can relate with this with the car that they have. You own one now, and all of a sudden, everywhere you drive, you're seeing Volkswagen bugs. You're like, oh, there's my car. Oh, there's my car. Well, is there magically a, a X amount of, of 
people that ran out and bought Volkswagen bugs? Absolutely not. You're just more conscious of it. So you're more open to it. So the things that you can become conscious of relationship-wise and be more open to, you're going to naturally attract them. They're already out there, but you're going to open your eyes to actually see them. I love it. I absolutely love it, bro. And wow, what, what a profound way. Um, and I love, you know, even just that we've been brought together. <laughs> Some of those traits. <laughs> just FYI, yeah, I don't have a relationship. This, this doesn't just mean, pardon me, it just doesn't mean, you know, male, female. You know, oftentimes that's the case, and for sure that's at the root of what everybody, or most people are designed rather, or, you know, male, male, depending on your sexual preference. But it doesn't have to mean love. This could be sister, any any kind of relationship that you want to in you know, today, take, you know, what we're saying into consideration and see if it feels good to you. Because it can really be applied there, too. Um, so, yeah, with that, yeah, be the person you want to be. Exemplify the love that you want. That you want and really check your motives. Don't desire someone to be loved, to have a warm body to lay next to at night. Desire desire something that's going to bring you to new heights in your life and open your eyes to different experiences. And I think oftentimes we really cling to the end result. Am I going to marry him? Am I going to be with him? Are we going to be together a year? Just enjoy the day and let it unfold because really all there is is here and now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really beautiful, um, Kayla. Thank you so much for, for really sharing your thoughts on that. And, and, you know, that is the one thing to reiterate. And, and I had this conversation the other night with a friend of mine, and, and I said, you know, I'm, I don't need, you know, I, I've been single for a long time. I've dated, so I'll give you guys that kind of perspective. And, you know, I've been engaged in things in my earlier years, but I really didn't want to avoid the self-discovery. And, uh, you know, I said, I'm looking for, not looking even, but I'm open, let's say. My heart is open to the right thing, not to just the thing, you know? Not to just, like, a bed warmer, because um, that's not fair to anyone. Um, but let's go into now finding the right one, and let's cruise on into my, one of my favorite topics, chemistry. You were talking about the chemistry that naturally happens, and, you know, not to be confused, but let's face it, girl. It's like your favorite dessert. <laughs> For me, it's a creme brulee. Kitty loves creme brulee, and it's like me yeah. So when I see that creme brulee, man cake, whatever that is, radiating for me in that essence, watch out when there's chemistry flying. Um, so there's no doubt to deny that there is a different level of chemistry connected between two people. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that, um, again, it's going back to the core, and Dr. Helen Fisher in her book, she um, she gives a really powerful analogy. Um, with this chemistry, you also have to check yourself. For example, imagine, me with my analogies, imagine that you're buying a house. And um, you can go and you do the walkthrough and the house looks amazing. It's just an initial walkthrough, it's about a half an hour. This essentially is the partner that you meet and you're falling for. Now, are you going to put all of your life savings into this house without doing a termite inspection and a foundation check and all of the, the elements that go into making an educated buy? Now, imagine buying that house on crap cocaine. <laughs> so, I mean, you really have to, like, go back to the foundation no. of the chemistry. So, um, I mean, obviously, people jump right into relationships. They marry very quickly. Sometimes people date for, you know, several years. I think that going with the chemistry, it's important to also recognize that that dopamine and norepinephrine, it has an expiration date. So you're going to feel these feelings of high with a, an initial partner for three or four years. And that's being liberal. Most of the time it's about two years. So in that time, you have to really get to know that person and have a foundation in order to have a lasting relationship. And I mean, to divulge something about myself, I just recently, you know, a few months got out of a four-year relationship myself. And, um, you know, it's not necessarily because those, those chemicals ran out. But, um, you know, the foundation, it's just the key is the foundation that you're building. Yeah, you know, I love it. And, we're, we're, you know, towards a little bit further down the road, we're going to talk even more about passion and kind of keeping that spark alive if you are in a long-term relationship or okay. knowing when to quit. Okay. Um, but, you know, one thing I just wanted to bring up with regards to what you were saying is it, it sounds like you're talking about in Tantra, uh, you know, they would say right brain, left brain. We're right brain, oh, exactly. something, and that's ecstasy, euphoria. That's that, that's that real, you know, diving full head first into the rush. Um, and then the masculine is left brain, and it actually crosses over in our bodies, just FYI, so the left side of the body will be feminine and vice versa for masculine. 
But the masculine is left brain, and it's more like structured, long-term planning. Will this work? Where does this go? So I think the key to even balancing out that chemistry comes back to that word that I just said to reiterate it, balance. Just being really balanced within those two aspects of yourself and making from there a, not even necessarily educated, but I would say a heart-based decision about how this feels for your life. Um, feeling it? You feeling it, girl? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I definitely I love what you're saying about the, the unity of those two sides because they complement each other, but they're also they're also at war with each other because oftentimes you can feel so connected to someone, but you're like, no, no, stay away, stay away. So you really right. do have to allow your cognitive thought to define your decision. But I think that when you're feeling the emotions, it's important to go with it. So it's finding I love that balance. It's all about wow. balance. Uh, okay, so let's hop into what we were, we started talking about, and I'm going to let you start writing with this one, girl, um, because you have brought it up before, but I just want to start by saying, speaking your truth is sexy. Speaking your truth is super sexy. I have a quote I want to use, and it says this. It's by Rob Bell, author of Velvet Elvis. He says, it's easy to take off your clothes and have sex. People do it all the time, but opening up your soul to someone Letting them into your spirit, thoughts, fears, future hopes, dreams, that's getting naked. And then I wrote, and it feels good. Because mm -hmm. um, it does. You know, speaking your truth is really sexy, and it's easy to sometimes just get naked. But when you're really opening up to someone, that's where I feel like the magic happens. I feel like that's the sweet spot right there, girl. So what are your thoughts about really speaking your truth and communicating with partners and people in your life? Um, I love that. I, I think that it's really important to remember that your voice is everything. No one can read your mind. Um, attraction is there, and it can be mutual. Sometimes it's not, and sometimes when that's the case, the only way to find out is to put yourself out there. There's actually a career coach that um, I've worked with before, Dallas Travers, and she says that the problem is the solution. And it's really profound if you really think about it. So if you are ever holding back from communicating or finding out your truth, the solution is your problem. So you need to actually go after what you're fearing most. A lot of a lot of girls say, Oh, if I you know, if I if I call he's gonna think this or he's gonna think that but really if you put yourself out there once, you put it out there. And now you need to release your need and and if it reciprocates and it comes back to you then awesome if not if you truly release that need you're going to be fine it's going to roll off your shoulders so i think communication is key i'm talking initial relationships obviously once you're you're deeper in and you know it's very mutual communication is how you keep it alive most definitely mm -hmm. absolutely you know uh, and then, awesome. you know not you know to go back to you but just you know and it all does it all, it's, it's so obvious how it all connects back into the self you know, just as you're talking about even communicating, communicating with your heart first. Because I love, you know, Article of Radio. It's what, what we're doing, coming together and we're allowing these, you know, thoughts to come to you, but to touch your own heart. And so from there, you can go have your own, you know, communication with yourself about all these things, all these different subjects. Um, but it is, yeah, it's so vital and it's so important to know what you want and to sort of, to keep that flame alive. But also what you said, and I just want to touch on a little more, is, letting go and not being attached to the outcome, you know, expressing your truth, but from a space of empowerment. So that's from a space where you don't crumble when, um, you know, man cake, number one, says no. You're like, you're like, woo! Like, for me, I'm like, yeah! Like, woo, woo, woo! And then I'll go do something crazy, like, you know, go to India, no, <laughs> but I was going to. Um, or start, you know, a show or, you know, write an article. I just go out and I take that passion and I put it into my art and I put it into my life. And I don't allow that a rejection to, and I use that word, you know, loosely. What is that even? It's just not really rejection. It's more of a clarification it's of what things are. Yeah, right. Clarification. I like that, not rejection. Um, so, yeah, that's beautiful. Let I have a little go. anecdote. Um, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> I don't know. Um, along that. Those are the same lines with communication. I'm really noticing, and I don't know if any of the listeners are noticing this. Like I said, I was in a four-year relationship. Four years ago, when I was dating, um, people picked up the phone and actually called one another when they liked each other. Now it's texting, and it's unreal. Um, I feel like texting is the death of communication, but you have to join the club. I think that it is 90% of the communication that goes on in initial meeting and dating of people, especially in my generation, the you know 20-somethings. 
And um, I just, I, I, I find that so funny that we have um, taken our communication and dumbed it down to such a level to where you're only allowed 160 characters, you got to be clear and concise, it lacks all info, but it's the world that we're living in. <laughs> well, you know, I love it too, and, and here's the thing, and you know, my thoughts on that. Um, and I have great people in my life too who are just really phenomenal. So they think we're aware, you know, open my mind to things. Because I was jumping on the texting, you know, wagon, and, and somebody alerted to me and said, you know, texting is kind of half communication. And, and that's what I love to communicate, but I prefer communication in person. You know, I've never, never really been a big phone person. My parents would tell you, like, but you get me in person, you know, watch out. And so it's like I was like, oh, you know what? You're right about that, and I want you to feel my voice. I want you to feel the vibration of, you know, my harmonic. I want to reach out and touch you and let you really know from the core of my soul that I want to connect. So I feel like, good point, sister, let's use it for what it's for, like tweeting, you know, our various thoughts. But let's not make that our foundation for how we connect. Let's make our foundation for how we connect really personal, really intimate, and really physical. I think, though, sometimes you have to play by the rules. I mean, texting is the mode of the future. Anthropologists call it the lowest form of communication. Um, and it, it really truly is. But, I mean, it's hard. It's, balanced, it's hard to you know, do both. You know what I mean? Kind of just balance it out is my feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we are cruising towards the end of the show, but we've got a couple more things we want to talk about. Um, wanted to talk about sort of you know, needing versus wanting a relationship and also really knowing when to quit um, or keeping the passion alive. Uh, I had the opportunity to do press at uh, No Fest in downtown LA in October, I believe, and um, I watched Ron Kaufman, this amazing speaker. Um, he, so, he was diagnosed with autism and he recovered from it and now he's an amazing speaker person, you know, enlightened being. And he was saying how it's like spoiled milk. Like, you know, if the milk's gone bad, you're not, don't keep, <laughs> don't keep drinking it. But people do, you know, or people repress different parts of themselves. And then six months down the line, it comes out, you know, and then everybody's still holding on. Or the one that I hear most often as a spiritual um, reader and counselor is uh, guilt. I get that all the time. It's guilt. It's, you know, I'm not really happy, but I don't want to leave this person because I feel guilty. Newsflash. You should be able to feel fear about staying, you know, because nobody's happy, clearly. So it's, it's letting go and just knowing when to quit um, and versus when to put passion in, which I'll talk more about after. But what are your thoughts about that knowing kind of when to quit or need versus want, Kayla? Well, I think that we've kind of had um, a social shift in relationships and conventional relationships that by definition are changing and evolving as we are changing and evolving as people. I think that, you know, Disney's a little bit to blame for the happily ever after, and, you know, of course that's the end of the movie, because I don't think happily ever after exists. It's a constant, um, not necessarily I wouldn't call it a battle, but you have to work for it, and it's not going to just come easy. So the need versus want that you're speaking of, and knowing when to quit, I think that you just have to, to look within yourself, and today is a new day, always. If you're not happy... And you tell yourself, oh, but, you know, there's financial reasons, there's children involved, there's marriage issues. You never right. want to exemplify a life that isn't fitting of who you are. And, and you can really lose yourself inside of someone or inside of a relationship yeah, that's not so And absolutely. so I think that just understanding that conventional relationships are changing and, and people are changing and you don't need to hold yourself to the same structure that maybe my mother or her mother held themselves to because if you look around you, I mean, the divorce rate's up, um, uh, people are having more, more casual sex. It's like, it's just things are changing and, and evolving. And um, oh. I think that just making sure that you know that you're respecting yourself, whether you be single or, or in a relationship, just, just knowing that it's something that is, is complementing your life rather than him right. it. So it, it sounds like, you know, what, what I kind of get from that and, and what feels like to me is just, you know, really, um, really being in communication with your own heart and how you feel and whether you're in it for the right or wrong reasons, you know, not holding back a settle with your life, but also letting your story be individual. So for me, I feel very drawn to partner for uh, a lifetime. 
and, and I'm putting that and projecting that out there. So in no time space, because that's my uh, frequency that I'm desiring, am I living in the alternative reality? Because that would be me creating the alternative reality, if that makes sense. However, I'm detached, so because I'm whole, so I'm open to whatever comes. I'm enjoying my life, so if that makes sense. But I feel like it's important to be really uh, alert to your individual story. And like you said, yes, don't hold yourself to, well, this is the way it looks, and this is the way I've seen it done, but this is, has to be the way it is. I mean, because it, no, you're absolutely right. The fact of the matter is, it's completely individual and, and unique, and it's perfect in that space when we allow it and we sit and let it go. Um, but and I think that, um, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Now, if you want to jump in with one more point, because then from there I was just going to kind of wrap it up into talking about um, just not walking away either. Like, for me, you know, if you're, if you're hitting a, a fear block, you know, and something is fearing you, but you have deep, passionate, you know, connection. And um, let, me, let me try to give you an example. Uh, you are married and you're really in love with this person. You know, this is the right person for you. There's deep passion. You have children. But he doesn't want to move and you want to move, or vice versa. He wants to move and you don't want to move. Is this the thing that you're going to go, oh, well, this is our cue. Now we know when to call it quits. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's something that you want to work on, invoking um, uh, compassion and compromise, balance, and what's continuing the passion in relationships. So what, where, where do you, what are you feeling on that, Kayla? Um, I think that you're absolutely right. Compromise is love. It, it really truly is. And, and we do things that we ordinarily wouldn't do for people that we love. And I think that that's a beautiful thing. But also at the same time, you can never be afraid of change. And that's, that's kind of, you know, easier said than done because I myself am afraid of change. It's, it's in our human nature. We get comfortable. But knowing that change actually raises your consciousness and, and brings you to uh, different heights that you, you ordinarily wouldn't experience. So just trying to practice fearlessness and, um, you know, and compromise. Either way, be it you need to exit a relationship or you want to put more of yourself into it, you just do what works for you. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And, you know, just keeping that passion alive, like you said, and kind of just to round out the show and then I'll just do some ending, you know, I'll let you know where you can link with us and give you guys with a poem here, but uh, to round it out kind of from where we started and, and just to you know, reiterate what Kayla just said, is just, yeah, passion, keeping that passion, keeping that conversation with your own heart alive and your own truth and just really being fearless and moving forward from that space. Um, so I thank you so much for joining me today, Kayla Tadish, you're, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful, you're you. talented. <laughs> um, it's, it's been a pleasure. Um, so friends uh, out there to the Heavenly Air State, thank you for joining us. We really, really love your energy and appreciate um, you listening. Uh, we hope you tune in next week. Uh, stay tuned for all that show info that will be posted via Facebook, blog talk, and Twitter on my account. Uh, be sure to connect with Kayla. And you can find her at www.facebook.com slash Kayla Tabish and or www.twitter.com slash Kayla Tabish. Um, and all of them are as well as the link uh, on the Blog Talk Radio in my page. So if you don't get the spelling here, don't worry about it. Um, or you can come in to contact with me. You can go to www.facebook.com slash AshleyDavian11 and or twitter.com. So with that said, I'm going to leave you with a poem. And I say, so love me, she said. Love me as a crisp winter's wind. Love snow crystals. Love me as the night loves day. Love me when you're warm or in need of a scarf or a fen. Love me as the comfort in your coffee mug. Love me now and love me again. Love me as I fill you to your brim. Love me now, ever and always. In all ways. And I will love you the same. Yay! Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. And, you know, that's just remembering to let yourself love. Love everyone. Love everything as the sky, as the breath, as the day. Love yourself first and just shout that out in all directions. We hope you, you connect with us in the future. Um, to find the, the intro chat, it's uh, by Clayton Joseph Scott. And you can go to www.claytonjosephscott.com and that song is called More Love. And more love to you. Thank you so much. Have fun.